My name is Julian Klauke. I'm 20 years old and I'm come from a small town in the western part of Germany. I'm doing my community service here in Beijing as a volunteer in the Beijing Stars and Brain, an organization for autism and autism research. This is my life in China. Raging Stars and Rain is an organization which was founded by the mother of an autistic child when she discovered that her, her son is autistic she um, didn't find any support so she founded this founded this, this school together with, with other parents and the most special thing about the uh, Stars and Rain is the group home where six teenage um, children live from Monday to Friday and where they are taught and this is really the only one group home specialized for autism uh, in the whole China. As, as volunteers, the most important part of our work is, is to, to help the teachers by supporting them during their lessons. Here we are now in the boys dormitory where the five boys sleep. Everybody has his own bed with his name and his picture. So he knows that it's just his bed and that he can be sure that nobody else will use his bed and also that uh, it's he can be sure oh, yesterday I was here so today this is my place just so they can relax more easily. And this is where the volunteers sleep where I for example sleep when uh, when I have night shift here. From this bed you can see all the other beds and you will hear when something happens so this is very um, a very comfortable way to just stay with them in one room and uh, be able to sleep but also be able to react when something happens. And here's Maxin. Maxin is the oldest one at the group home and he is also um, what, one of the first ones who were living there when it was founded in 2006. Um, also when he was very young he went to the to the kindergarten of he he and he on that time he already was, was very special he was um totally different from 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 the other autistic children i still remember the first time i saw it and i was really really i felt very very, very um helpless because because it's you really you want to help him and you you want to let him feel better but you just don't don't know what you can do so the only thing you can do is um to make sure that he hasn't he doesn't harm himself because in that kind of, of a situation he's also not controlling himself he he's not not the mass of his own mind of his own own movements his own actions so it's just possible to take everything that could be harmful away and wait until he gets better um, he needs some security so he tries to see as little as possible and to hear as little as possible when there are a lot of people because Changle or Zhu Yao they're making noises and it's just too much for Machine. 
So he likes to sit in a corner and um, to put his his clothes ab above his head, ab his ears, so that he hears less. And he also has this string uh, around his, his hands, which he himself takes. It's not that, that we give it to him, it's he, he's self, he himself he needs it and he knows that. It's also kind of feeling secure because he then feels some kind of power and some kind of strong thing. And it's also um, that he and he knows that um, other people can't do a lot of things to him when he has his hands tied up. For example, when he has his hands tied up in, in front, we, we uh, can't reach his belly or something. So it's, he also knows that his upper body is, is safe by that. And that's um, what is very important for him. Um, he is maybe the kid that is, which emotions are the strongest, um, and he, who is living the most in his own world because um, he sometimes is just very, very happy and for no reason he just sits in the corner and starts to laugh and starts to, to jump and to dance or however you want to call it and the next minute he just sits in the corner and cries and nothing happened. So it's just something, I don't know, if, if, if he's remembering things or if he's seeing things or something happens in his world which what we can't see. And it's really, for us, it's, he's mm, very much unpredictable. Yeah, he's, he's maybe, maybe the child which has the most autistic behavior. And we always like Maxim uh, from the beginning. He was there and still, still there, and he still has some years to, to go. He is the one that speaks the most. <laughs> Um, he also can can read Chinese characters. He could write them, but he doesn't doesn't like to write them. Um, he his special skill is um, is cutting paper. He when he ca when he came to he 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 didn't he he wasn't able to to cut paper. But now it's just his stereotype, as a lot of children with autism need some repetitions. Because this repetition gives them the feeling that everything is in the right place, that they're doing the right thing, and that um, they can relax. And for Jiao it's really his, the cutting. 
he can sit there the whole day cutting fish or cutting moons or whatever. Um, he recognized people. And um, uh, a few months ago, another volunteer, a former volunteer, came to, to visit. It was a volunteer from 2006, and he still knew his name. And it was, I was really surprised that he still knew the name of him. Actually, recognizes people and, and clothes and everything, but still um, he doesn't communicate a lot with them. Changle came about a year ago. Um, he also he likes to communicate, but he doesn't know how to do it. Um, he he's quite lazy and his his language is still very very few his words are very very few but um, his development was, is very very fast Um, when I came, he was able to express express three needs. He was going to the toilet, sleeping, and eating. And now he's able to express a lot more. He can say that he wants a, uh, a head massage or that he wants to hold your hand or whatever. So that is um, a great improvement. Um, but still, it's sometimes that he doesn't know how to, um, how to communicate. So um, he does things just to get our reactions, which is, for example, when he... He took my hair, it was just, he likes my hair, but the other part is that he just wanted to have a reaction. He likes to eat and whatever he gets, he puts into his mouth, which is also a problem. Yeah. And his, his uh, hands are normally quite dirty um, because he also puts them everywhere. He likes to sing. Um, different from Zhu Yao, it's, it's, his songs doesn't make sense. Like the melody is right, but he doesn't know the words. Um, but different from that, we just say, at the moment he's the, the easiest one at the group home, because he, he's just lazy, but normally he just he just got used to the to the environment. He knows the rules, and he is very independent now. Actually.
Before I came to China, I never worked with autistic children, so it was my first experience here. And at first it was very strange because they just have their own their own world. They have their own rules. But after some time I just um I learned and understood that their world is as much a world as ours, but that their problem is that they can't understand our world. They can't understand the normal world. And so it's important for us to teach them to understand it. It's not important to, to change them, but it's important for, for us to that they can understand our world. Maybe the most difficult part in, in the work is, is during night time because um, they just they go very early to bed because they need a long time to, to, to get tired and to get, to get sleepy. Um, in the beginning it's no problem, but you, you reach a point when, you, when you, you yourself are very sleepy and very tired and you just want to sleep. And then it's sometimes very, very hard to stay calm. If, also if you told them the tenth time that they should sleep now and they shouldn't sing in the bed, then it gets really unnerving. They, they are not doing it deliberately. That they're, it's just they don't, don't understand that they shouldn't sing at that time or whatever. Most beautiful moments are normally when um, you can talk to them, like to Driao. It's not a normal conversation, but he has some some questions or some beginning of sentences, and I can um, say the rest of it or say an answer, or I can ask him things and he will answer to it. And this is sometimes really really nice. And another nice thing is when, for example, um, when you taught them something in a lesson and they just use it afterwards for themselves. Because then you can really see that the things you taught them, they understood them, they normally don't say thank you to you. They don't, un they don't know what, what thank you means. But by using things they learn from you, it's kind of a thank you. I would, what really is missing in China is the awareness for autism. It's a thing that, that the Stars and Drain is working on. They um, try to um, inform a lot of people about autism, but there's still a great lack. So a lot of people just don't know what aut autistic children are like. And that's a big problem for, for parents. The, um, the plan is that in October I will go to, to university. I will start there to study psychology, to learn more about the, the human behavior and the human experience. So I, I also, of course, could, could imagine to again work at the group home, but I think um, like after my, my university and after the studies, I might just want to go more on the level on informing other, other people about the, the autism and on, by that just helping having a lot of, of kids to have a better life because then a lot of pressure would would decrease. And the kids, sometimes when, when I was feeling a bit de depressed, they would just help me. They were just the same every day. I just They just came and tucked me or were just playing with me and I, I just know, okay. I sometimes say they're just the best kids of the world. It's just, it's just, too much actually that that I wanted to say but that I won't be able to say.
的对我说，童话里都是骗人的。